Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I wonder how you would respond to him if he was here. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. and the strength that you've bestowed upon us for it's only by your grace and mercy that we have it Lord God we thank you that your word tells us that because you're so rich in mercy you're able to distribute it new every morning thank you Lord God that we don't get recycled mercies and grace but we thank you that you distribute it to us every day fresh brand new Father, today we come into your house giving you the fruit of our lips, giving you the fruit of our loins, Lord God, as we move and speak your praises. Lord God, we don't allow our problems and our cares to take over us here in this atmosphere. But today we ask that the Holy Spirit would take over us and we will be led and guided by his, his activity, Lord God, in us. Father, you said the same power that raised you from the dead resides in us. And so there is dunamis power in the room, power that can change a life, power that can heal the sick, power that can break addictions, power that can shift mind states, power that can soften hearts. And Father, I pray that today we will move in that power. Let your worship go forth. Let it come out of each and every person. Don't allow it to be manufactured by the songs that are sung or by the preacher that is preaching or the talking that's being done over the microphone, but let it come from a sincere love that's inside of us for you. Let it come forth from a natural place. No, no pumping or prying here. Lord God, let us be led to give you what you're due because we know what you're due let us be led to give you what you're worth because we know what you're worth Lord God let us give you our best because you have been the best to us hallelujah thank you for loving us in spite of us thank you thank you that that we our sins don't affect how you feel towards us as our pastor tells us, you love us more than you hate the sins we commit. Thank you for loving us. Father, for that, for this next hour or two, we give you all of us. With the hopes and the prayers that it would change us forever. Lord God, let this encounter that we experience today change us forever. Let us get a little bit closer to you today, Lord God. Let us, let us change our heart's posture a little bit more for you today. Let us put a little bit more flesh on the altar today. Because of today's encounter, Lord God, let us be closer to you than ever before, God. We desire more of you. We desire more of you Lord the, the, the same way you desire so much more of us we today desire more of you Lord you haven't ever been too far away it's been us that's been far away for oh, God let us draw draw closer let us draw closer to you we want to experience you on a new level we want to know you in a new way we ask that you would pour onto us today, Lord God. Let us be ready and receptive. Let us be in position to receive that which you have for us today. And we'll be careful, Lord God, to give you all the glory and the honor and the praise. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. And if you're prepared for a move of God, would you just lift your lips today? Would you open your mouth?
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised, isn't he? Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. If you can stand up on your feet with us and join in with us as we go into praise and worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're worthy, God, and we give you all the glory. You're worthy, God, and we give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, put your hands together like this.
win. When we praise, he fights. Hey, hey, that's the preach the sermon. When we praise, he fights on our behalf. I don't have to war with nothing. I don't have to fight with nothing. All I have to do is lift my hands, open up my mouth, pick up my feet and put them down. Because I understand that we fight from victory. Haha, <laughs> not for it, from it. Because he has given us the victory. Thank you, Jesus. So God, we thank you that it's through you, Lord, that we are able to breathe. We are able to live this walk out, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, just close your eyes. And take some time to just worship him. And thank him for the victory. For it's nobody but him that has given it to us. Nobody but him. Even on your good day, you didn't give it to yourself. <laughs> it comes from God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Let's all sing it together. up your voice and just give them worship. Give them adoration. Give them a Lord, I love you. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I praise you. Even when I don't feel like it, God, I'll lift my hands and I'll give you all the glory. I'll give you all the honor. Come on, open up your mouth. Pour out your praise at his feet. Pour out your praise at his feet. Some of you have been waiting for this moment. You've been waiting for this moment just to be sitting in his presence. Come on, pour it out, pour it out, pour it out, pour it out. Push beyond you. God, I give it to you. God, I love you. God, I adore you. God, I need you. I need you, great God. I need you, sovereign God. I need your redeemer. I need your savior. Yea, God, yea, God, yea, God, yea, God, yea, God, yea, God. Oh, we press into you, Jesus. 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 We call you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, we call you Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. We find our peace in your presence. We find our joy in your presence. We find everything we stand in need of in your presence. We find our answers. We find our affirmation. Everything we need is in you. Everything we need is in you. Everything we need is in you. We're not gonna look nowhere else but for you. It's you and you only. You and you only. You and you only. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God.
atmosphere I take a moment I would tell you to take a moment and cry out to him I tell you to take a moment and fall on the altar I tell you to take a moment and let the idols come down as he's being exalted I would tell you to take a moment and and allow him to just pour into you this atmosphere isn't sometimes hard to come by it's not everywhere but when there's when the believers come together hallelujah so I encourage you take a moment Take a moment. Take a moment and press into him. Take a moment and surrender to him. Hallelujah. We can go off program. We can go off script. Let's be led by the Holy Spirit today.
some ashamed worshipers in the building. Let's lift up our voice one more last time. To today, do you? I love him on today, do you? Nothing else makes sense like God. Nothing else makes sense like God. It's one of the reasons why I worship him because he gives meaning to my existence. I worship him because to worship anything else would be futile. To worship anything else would be demeaning. But I worship God because there's none like him that gives meaning to my existence. He's my, he's my alpha and my omega. He's my genesis and my revelation. Nobody else can make sense of my life like he can. And so God, because you're the one that gave me meaning, I live, I live, I live, I live, I live to worship you. I can't even get tired of worship. You've been too good. I, I, I can stay here for another hour without thinking about it. Oh, he is too good, he's 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 too good. So I live, I live, I breathe. After all I've been through and I'm still here to work. You, I know y'all tired of me, but I live, I live, I breathe. Oh, oh, oh. hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Yes, God. I live and I breathe to worship you. mother help yourself his presence for in his presence there is fullness of joy in his presence there is peace that's why if you're ever in a church and you know God has been realized and when I say that I mean because God doesn't show up we say that but God has already been here <laughs> he's everywhere at the same time so God doesn't for him to show up mean that a part of him wasn't here so when we say God shows up, what we're really saying is that our hearts are warmed up enough to recognize his presence. It's actually we have awakened. It's actually we have been aroused in our spirit to realize the one who has been there all along. Amen. And I love to be awakened in my spirit and to feel near to my God. I don't know about you, but there's no other place I'd rather be than to be close to him, to be that to, to be near, to be in his bosom, for the breath of his nostrils to be on me, if I could use in a, in a metaphorical sense, to be close to him. Hallelujah. And the beauty of all that is that he's desiring to be close to us. That's why he put his spirit in us instead of around us. And so while you hungry for him, he hungry for you. And the God that I serve, Auntie Wanda, won't stop pursuing you and chase you down. Amen. We thank God. We thank God for that spontaneous worship today. Hallelujah. I, I give no apologies for worship. I encourage you to grow in your worship. Be sustained in your worship. And I think that, that, that is where intimacy can take place on a deeper level between you and God. And I encourage you to do it in your homes. As we talked about on Wednesday, sanctifying the homes, sanctifying the families. Take time as a family and worship him. You ain't got to sound good. You just got to mean well. It ain't about how good you sound. It's about how sincere your heart is. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for your presence this morning. God, I thank you for the hearts that are here, that are on, as the older saints will see, one accord as we see you moving from heart to heart and breast to breast. And, Father, we pray that the Holy Spirit will give illumination and understanding to your word today, that the seed of your word will fall on good soil and germinate and, and transform us in some way that would be more like your son, Jesus Christ, that you may get the glory out of our existence. Have your way, have your way. Move by your spirit, set free and deliver. Heal and restore. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. And my brothers and sisters say amen. Amen. Come on, give God another hand clap of praise. Hey, hey, Sister Tanisha, can I get just a little more on my mic? Just a little more. Thank you so much. This will probably be our last Sunday message uh, for the family series as we get ready to move into Easter.
um, for April 17th, for those of you who all want to buy outfits, April 17th is Easter. So if you need to get something altered or hemmed or there's a certain color that you're looking for, you might want to get out there t today, today, uh, where we know Sunday's best has changed. We, we don't do the three-piece suits like, like we used to. But if you want your denim, your white, hey, JC, you, you, you want your white tennis shoes, whatever it is you're going to wear, it, just don't get it today because April 17th, you're going to blink and it's going to be here, amen. You're going to blink and it's going to be <laughs> Resurrection Sunday. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many know you ain't got to wait till April 17th to celebrate the resurrection? <laughs> but we can celebrate it right now. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, I pray that this series has blessed you. I uh, pray that it is, has in some way strengthened your homes, uh, gave you some, some direction and some guidance on being stewards over your families and over your marriages. Uh, and today, today, it's going to be a unique angle uh, that we're going to deal with as we close. We may still deal with some family things on Wednesday night for Bible study. But today, we're going to talk about building a family that lasts. Building a family that lasts. And I'm going to be talking about marriage and family in this message, so follow me. Uh, if you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, Proverbs. King Solomon wrote it, Proverbs, the 24th chapter, the third and fourth verse. If you are able, go ahead and stand for the reading of God's word. Yep, Proverbs 24, starting at verse 3. We strive to be a family of believers, accountable to God's calling, consistent in our ministry, relentless in our pursuit of biblical doctrine, and responsive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Whereas, in this house, we love God, love others, learn together, and live it out. Come on, make some noise for the vision of the house. Thank you to each and every one of you that were able uh, to, to come in and support the Lucky family as we celebrated the life of Deacon Lucky, Deacon John Q. Lucky. Uh, it was truly indeed a celebration. Godly proud of the family and how they, they reverenced him, they loved on him. Uh, and though he's not physically here with us, he is forever in our hearts. Um, Y'all may not know it, but to our new members, those are the shoulders you stand on. It was their labor of love that allowed for me to have something to continue to build on. Their tithes and offering, their sacrifices, their prayers, their push. Uh, and so we thank God for him and his beautiful wife. Uh, they're now together. And I miss them dearly. Proverbs 24, the third verse, if you got to say amen. Okay, it says here in the King James Version, through wisdom is a house builded, and by understanding it is established, and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, building a family that lasts. Family, as I've stated earlier uh, throughout the series, that family is one of the most important institutions on earth because it's one that God established, and he established it before church. Before there, were, before there was ever a church, there was family. Before there ever was government, there was family. So therefore, family is the, uh, how can I say, it is the solution, it is the remedy, it is the, the cure for social ills. Why? Because everybody comes from a family. It should be the prototype for society. That's why when I sit down with my children, I tell them to say yes, sir, and 
no, sir, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. I teach them to say, please, excuse me, to respect other human beings, to, to be mannerable. Why? Because I want them to go out in society and be upsteading citizens. But being that they are believers, I also want them to be righteous Christians. I, I want them not only to do it just to be uh, 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 socially correct, but I also want them to live in a way that gives God the glory. And so family is where they'll learn that. Family is where they'll be corrected. Family is the cure for social ills. Good families will stabilize a nation. Amen? And so here we have this series as we're talking about and encouraging the family, I want to talk about being that we need family so bad, the, the, the key, and it's really one, it's the key to building a family that will last. People don't get prepared to get married anymore. I've actually had a few of my, you know, I got some high school friends. Oh, yeah, Judah, pastor, he can marry us. They call me up. What up, Judah, man? Hey, me and my fiance want to know if you, are, uh, man, if you do the ceremony. And I'd be like, well, who's your pastor? Uh, we'll have a church home. Okay. Well, when can we meet for marriage counseling? Because I... Don't do shotgun weddings. I want to help curb the divorce rate. And so what, what's sad is that in our society, and I got to give a shout out to Dr. Miles Monroe because a lot of points I'm going to share come from him. And if you don't know Dr. Miles Monroe, I'm going to tell you to get to know him by his books. Look at his videos on YouTube. This man's mind is amazing, unfortunately. Uh, he and his wife passed away in a, in a plane crash probably about like eight years ago. And he, man, his sermon is still powerful. And so I took a lot of nuggets from his message uh, that I was, I was listening to throughout the week. And I, and I love Dr. Miles Monroe, so check him out. Uh, but, but the thing is, the scary thing is that society doesn't value the preparation for marriage like they do other things. So, for example, when you go to get your license, you have to wait to a certain age. Then you have to go and take a test for your temps, right? And then you have to buy a book to take a test for your license. Then if you went to, the, to driving school, you have to have so many driving hours. And then after the driving hours, you took an actual test where somebody graded you on your turns and your, 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 um, your parking and parallel parking and things of that nature. And then after you get done with that and you pass that test, then they give you a license and say, you are now safe to drive on our streets. Even in, with our careers, when it comes to our careers, we go to a college or we go to some type of uh, a school that specializes in the area we want to study, you're going to at least, even in a special school, maybe two years, college, four to eight, depending on your major, right? And in, in, in some situations, you've got to take certain classes before you even get to your major. I think they're called electives. Am I correct? They're the, be huh? Oh, prerequisites. Thank oh, she, she got, you went to school. <laughs> Thank you. Pastor don't know it all. You got three kids. Give it up to Deja that graduated from Syracuse. Is it Syracuse? So, Deja, you know what I'm talking about, right? Deja, you had to take some prerequisites. And then is the elective, electives next? Oh, electives is the fun stuff. So, when, then it's the classes for your major. I don't know what that is. Concentrated study. Did that sound professional? You have your concentrated study. That sound about right, PJ? Thank you, sir. And so you, you, you have to take these classes, but just because you take these classes don't mean you are qualified. you got to pass exams, tests, and, and they're hard. Bar exams for lawyers, right? Yeah, yeah, there's certain things that you have to do. And then after all these years, you get a degree. 
And they say you are qualified in this field to go and practice and perform duties for the for society. But when you get married, you take $25, you go downtown, you give them $25, and they don't ask you no questions. Maybe your ID. I ain't lying. Am I lying? And that's why cars and careers are lasting longer than marriages. We don't take the same diligence that we take with other areas in our lives. Am I right? And people want to jump in. They want to jump in because they're in love. We're going to talk about that. They want to jump in because that's their boo. But I want to tell some of the single folk in here today. Pray for your boo. Prepare for your boo. Because you, you need to marry somebody one day because God didn't tell us, I mean, unless you're a eunuch and you've got a unique calling on your life, you need to marry somebody. But what I want to say here, for the single folks, when you bring that boot to your family and your family notice some red flags, take heed to what they saying. Everything, disagreement isn't always hating. I, I, I got friends that are grown that I wish would have listened to their mamas and daddies. Hear me what I'm saying. Man, if you know what, back in 03, <laughs> if you would have listened, listen. Because I'm telling you, it takes seconds to get married. It's another thing to have a marriage. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You don't want to just run in or jump in without taking the proper due diligence to make sure you know this person and to make sure that you are compatible. Uh, 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 Dr. Dr. Denzel, uh, Denzel Washington, one of my favorite actors, and he, he, you know, he be coming up with some, some, some clips that be dropping some nuggets. And one of, them, one of them that he said that I remember, and I can't, I can't probably say it word for word like he said. He said, but brothers, when you pick in a woman, Make sure that you see more than just her curves because her curves attracted you to her, but her brain is going to raise your children. <laughs> Same thing for the ladies. I get that he's fine, but what's in his brain? How does he think? What God does he serve? What was his family like life? How he treat his mama? I think there's some truth in that. That You can tell if a man is going to be good to his wife depending on how he treats his mama. Because I love me some Lola May early. And I love me some Tiffany early. Man, listen, that's my boo thing over there. She got curves and a brain. That's a, come on, you hear me, Earn? She fine, Doc. Y'all lucky y'all get sermons. I'll be distracted. Where you going? Come here. <laughs> Kids always saying, ugh, because we kiss. I say, you want us to be divorced? Like, mommy, why you sitting on his lap? You want us to be separated? T sit down, woman. Sit down right here. What? Listen. Don't just be caught up on the attraction, though. They got to have something between them ears. The, 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 thing, the thing that's going to blow your mind today, I think, is that love and sex doesn't make family or marriages last. That's really what I, that's really if I could just put the sermon, that's it. Because everybody got it and folks still getting divorced. And if I can add another one to that list, money don't either. Mm -mm. It's nice to have those things, 
and I have to be careful with love. I have to be careful with love because it is an important factor. Hear me what I say, but love isn't the only thing that keeps a marriage. In our text, in our text today, it says here, through wisdom is a house builded, and by understanding is it established, and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled. Nowhere did it say love. Nowhere did it say sex. Where did it say money? Now, in 1 Peter 3 and 7, I'm just going to turn to it real quick. And I, and I, I, I th thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. E even if you're single, you need to pay attention to this sermon. I'm trying to help you. 1 Peter 3 and 7. And it reads, likewise, ye husbands, dwell, house, dwell with them according to knowledge. 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 What is knowledge? Knowledge is information. Write that down. Knowledge is information. It is, in the Greek, it is the psychological result of perception and learning. It means that you observe and you learn. Now, he said it for husbands, but I believe the principle applies to both genders. Because the wife got to dwell with him, too. <laughs> and and, and, and what, what, we're, what we're missing is that it's not that the person doesn't love you, they're just ignorant about you. <laughs> they love you, they just don't know how to love you. They're learning how to love you. They need knowledge. Am I making sense? And so here, here in life, God has given us basic instructions before leaving earth. What is that called? Oh, uh, y'all went to the Sunday school class too? Me too. Bible, B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. And so God has given us a manual. Right? He's, he's given us some, some universal instructions. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Right? 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 Wives, respect your husbands. Fathers, don't exasperate your children. Children, obey your Lord for this is pleasing. Obey your parents for this is pleasing unto the Lord. Right? Th th those are direct commands. But then we have to take that logos, that written word, and we have to get rhema word. Now, how do I apply this to Tiffany? Mm -hmm. Because with the manual, sometimes there's some things you learn about the product that the manual doesn't teach you. You learn through experience of working with the product. But the manual is usually, and I, I like Dr. Miles Monroe said this, he said the manual, when, when it comes out, when you open the box, the manual is usually right on top. It's the first thing, and you know, usually what we do, we, ah, <laughs> I know how to work this. <laughs> da, <laughs> bing bong, I got it. <laughs> Hey, you ever, you ever threw that manual and you got to pick that joker back up? You, you, had, to, you had to humble yourself like, oh, I put the screw in. Totally wrong. That's why this thing is wobbly. Me too. Oh, The manual is on top. Why? Because information is more important than operation. Write that down. Information, I got you, Steph, is more important than operation. That's why you can't get to operation before you get the information. That's why I was telling the singles. Wait, get information, get information, get information. Manual means to manu means to make. So manual means to make us mine. Manufacturer means the factor that made it. And so I, that means that God has given a piece of his mind. To show us how to operate the product. Now, he's giving us the written word, which gives us standards. But then we take that written word and God, the Holy Spirit, comes along and he what? Guides us 
into all truth. And that scripture also says, John 14, 16, that he'll bring, um, 1426, John 14, 26, he will bring things back to remembrance. And so this is where the three core strand is not easily broken. When you include God in the marriage, you take, he takes the standards that he's given you and he brings the Holy Spirit alongside you to show you how to apply those standards to your specific relationship. And so you have to have the Holy Spirit. Like it or not. Because if you didn't need it, so many people will be successful without it. But I'm here to tell you, it's God's idea. So use his power. You, am I making sense? It says here in the text that through wisdom is a house built. It's, it's through wisdom. And what they mean by through wisdom, it is by wisdom working through us. That a house is built. That a house is built. Wisdom is what? Application. If you're taking notes, write that down. You cannot apply what you don't understand. And I'm almost working backwards because of the layout of the text. Because wisdom would be the last step. But it says here, I saw this quote that says, A wise man is better than a warrior. And he who has knowledge than he who has strength. For war is conducted by wise guidance and victory lies in counselors. Y'all ain't hear it. See, some of us just, ah, I'm going to go do it. Sit down. Think first. Sit, sit down. You, you, you just going you to do it. You're going to make it happen. No, you're not. You need wisdom. Come on. Wisdom is how to apply knowledge and comprehension. When to apply what you know and understand. <laughs> this is a good example. So, in a relationship, when I first married my wife, this beautiful thing right here, she was the most introverted woman I had ever dated. And when we got our little spot, she ain't want nobody coming over. Nobody. Now today, the whole USA is, is welcome. <laughs> Almost. She's changed a lot. But when we, when, we first, when we first got married, I had to use wisdom when to invite somebody. Because I knew her. I had to use wisdom and say, hey, babe, you know what? We're not going to come here. Can we go to BW3s? And we'll meet there because I know she don't want to be bothered with nobody at her house. Because I understand her. It's not that she's mean. It's not that she's standoffish. It, that's her personality at that time. She didn't want feel comfortable with people in her intimate space. Matter of fact, even family members didn't even come over. I'm serious. And it wasn't a, ah, oh, she didn't love him or nothing. She just wanted her own space. I knew that. So it would be rude for me to have five guys come over, making noise and watching the game, knowing that's going to interrupt our space. See, one thing, fellas, about marriage, you got to lay down with that woman. They don't. <laughs> if you're married. If you're married. And wake up. Yeah, yeah, and wake up. So if it's a bear, I'm going to poke. It ain't going to be that one. <laughs> gonna poke y'all. <laughs> get out, get out, get out, get out. Because <laughs> I want to I wanna have harmony in my home, right? But I, I wouldn't know that without information, without understanding. Will, Proverbs 9 and 1 says, wisdom has built her house, and she has hewn out her seven pillars. Wisdom has built her house. And when you think about it, wisdom and understanding frames the house in a metaphorical sense. It's almost as if wisdom is the walls and, and understanding is the foundation. 
Look here in verse 3. Through wisdom a house is built and by understanding. What is understanding? Comprehension. Comprehension. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all thy getting, get what? Understanding. Comprehension. Established. Understanding will establish the home. Why? Because if somebody's understood, they are seen. If somebody's understood, they are heard. Uh, in some relationships, all the family member wants is to be seen and heard. And when you respond to me in a way that you comprehend who I am, I feel seen. Do you know some people commit suicide because they feel that even though they're surrounded by a lot of people, nobody sees them? Yeah. So, so understanding your wife, understanding your husband, or understanding your fiance, understanding your children establishes your home. Why? Because when you walk through those doors, this is where my identity is reverenced. This is where I am somebody of nowhere else. I'm seen, I'm felt, I'm heard. Amen? So we have wisdom, which is application. We have understanding, which is comprehension. And then we have knowledge, which I stated before is information. Knowledge, what does knowledge do? Knowledge and by knowledge shall the chambers, what do you think chambers are? Rooms be filled, hold up, with all precious and pleasant riches. Come out. He didn't say nothing about a BMW. He said nothing about a mansion. I hope y'all listening. It's elementary, but if you apply it, it's major. He said nothing about a bank account. No, what was rich was the wisdom, the understanding, and the knowledge that filled the house. Why? Because BMWs and mansions decay. But the memories that, that include my identity, the memories that, 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 that were in these spaces where I was seen, where I was felt, where I was understood, last beyond death. That's what's rich. Because we, we focus on being providers, but yet we can't deal with relationships. I think somebody posted that we can see God doing everything except how we should treat people. We see what God, what God is doing in the nations, what God is doing in Ukraine. We see what God is doing in, in Atlanta. We see what God is doing in California. We see what God is doing in Cleveland. But you don't see what God is doing at your address. That was a little harsh. I'm sorry. Okay. But the wealth of your home is not really the, the, the evaluation of your physical things. But it is the strength of the relationships. <laughs> you, you can have a hut and be richer than somebody in a mansion. Because in that mansion, nobody's connected. Nobody knows each other. Nobody understands each other. Nobody cares about each other. But in that little hut, y'all got everything y'all need because y'all got each other. Y'all know each other. Y'all care about each other. You understand each other. Am I making sense? See, that family that understands the beauty of relationship and connection, they can last insufficient funds. They can, they, can, they can last through a loved one dying. They can last through opposition. Why? Because the Bible says it's better to two walk together than one. But you can have two people who are in the same place but not connected. <laughs> And so what, what you have to do is you have to make sure that you are building relationships with those you dwell with. That, and those relationships evolve because things change. Life changes you. 
from career to sickly parents to death to children growing up to children leaving the nest. Life changes, so the relationships have to continually be invested in so that you can stay current with those you dwell with. Mm. Here's some things, especially with those husbands and wives, fiancés. You're talking, but you're not sharing. And, And I'm almost done. I'm about to get out of here. We're talking, but we're not sharing. What you're saying, Pastor? I'm saying you're talking about what's going on around us, but we're not talking about what's going on within us. And you need to know what's going on within. Why? So that you can be current on your relationship, so that you can be a a, a targeted intercessor, so so you can know how to pray and not pray amiss, so that you can know how to encourage and what words to say. And in your time of meditation, what to be thinking and how to handle them. What's going on within your spouse today? Do you know? Because if y'all are tight, then the family can be tight. Because when the parents ain't tight, the kids suffer. Get in their world is what I'm saying. Get knowledge. Get comprehension. Family and, and, and relationships is not just about that butterflies in your stomach. It's not just your heart. You also have to use your brain. Am I making sense this morning? Okay. That's why the Bible says to dwell with them with knowledge. It says here, to, to, by knowledge, the, the, the chambers are filled. Uh, the, 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 the foundation is established through understanding. The house is built through wisdom. These are all intangible things that we cannot see operating, but we see the effects of them. Pay attention to stories, and this is this just in my time of meditation, and, I, and I'm, we about to be done. Pay attention to stories about their past that still has impact on their present. You want to get to know them? What scarred them the most? What scared them? What angered them? Hey, they don't always got to be bad. What made them alive? What did they enjoy succeeding at? Get in their minds. Get what, what, what is, if they don't know, what is God's purpose for their lives? And if they do, how are you complimenting that? How are you pushing God's agenda on their lives? How, how, how is it, Elder Brantley, that I pastor all these people but don't pastor that one right there? How is it that I go and preach all these revivals but don't preach to my own children? I have all these Bible studies with y'all, but then I don't have Bible studies with my own kids. Ah, the intangibles. <laughs> what, what are their fears? What are their dreams? What is their love language? Get in their lives so that you can build a firm foundation. You know, you know what, what I hear new couples say? He, he understands me. He gets me. In the beginning, huh? <laughs> ain't nobody talking. I'm telling the truth, ain't I? He, 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 he gets my goofiness. He understands my quirks. <laughs> All right. He's, he's a whole vibe. He gets me. It, it, it ain't got... <laughs> Ain't got nothing to do with intimacy in the physical sense. We ain't talking about money. She's excited that she's understood. That's what you got to labor in after you done said I do and the honeymoon is over. That you still labor to understand him and her. That's where the where the work <laughs> Because there's days you don't feel like you could care less. You go your way and I go mine today. God bless you. Those days do happen. You know, you know them two, three days of silence. Me and first lady know about them. 
it really sucked when we when my when my oldest got older and she was like, Y'all not talking? <laughs> and then you both sitting there like, get out of grown folks' business. <laughs> Next thing you know, we talking, cause this I can't say what I usually say, but this African American <laughs> then made us talk. And you know, you be strong in that joker. I ain't saying nothing. I'm going to die silent. I'm going to die silent. What? 37 hours, I ain't said hi, nothing. Got right out the bed, didn't say nothing. You want sour cream on your bagel? And I talked. You going to Bible study with me tonight. Hey, married folks are some of the biggest kids on earth. I'm trying to tell you, we are some of the most pettiest, biggest kids you ever seen. You want to see a daycare? Go to a house. <laughs> Somebody been married for 10 years, ain't going nowhere. They mad, but they ain't going nowhere. You want to watch the Cavs game tonight? You want salt? Man, listen, I've been married going on 15 years this year. We don't win a couple rounds. I ain't going nowhere, girl. That's my, that's my best friend right there. Which brings me to another point. Your spouse needs to be your best friend. I've done marriage counseling for almost 15 years of my past, 14 years of my past story. And one of the things that I've learned in my years of counseling is that somewhere in the relationship, the husband and the wife stop being friends. The crazy thing is, friendship is what you see in Proverbs 24, 3 and 4. It is a relationship without sexual intimacy. <laughs> Understanding comprehension, knowledge, wisdom. That's what a friend is, right? That's why you call them. And that's why you can get on the phone and be like, ah, and they know what ah mean. Hello, bing bong. Girl, don't even start. You started with the bing bong. What happened? Looks. We can look, right? There's that connection there. Friendship is important. Friend, and if you think about it, and, and I'm just going to be tr honest. It's just going to be a point when your, your body ain't going to be able to do what y'all used to do in the bedroom. What are you going to have when that is no longer there and y'all both sitting, you know, in y'all little chairs. With your, one got a catheter, one got a walker. Like, all you going to have, Earn, is friendship. What we going to do? You see it? I'm imagining it. Hey, no. It's done. It's over. All you have is conversation, right? You want pulp in your lemonade. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'm at home. I can do whatever I want to do when I'm preaching. Huh? My wife don't like pulp in her orange juice. I love pulp. Give me all the pulp. Who like pulp? Wave your hand at me. All right. I am outnumbered. T, I see you. I see you. I think you I like the poll. But you know what's scary? It's to get, to still be together, to get to that place in life and not have a friendship. To have an enemy. And guess what? You can't hide behind the kids no more. They're gone. <laughs> I'm not about to let these kids turn her into my enemy. I'll be telling the kids, get out, get away. This is me and her time. Why? Because I want to invest to make sure that when we get to that stage, we still rocking and rolling. When I see old people walking down the street holding hands, I am, hey, that's what I'm talking about. I don't care if they black, white. I'm like, Bernie, hold her hand, Bernie. Bernie. That's it, Bernie. I see you, Gertrude. I see you, girl. 
I, my wife will tell you, I'll give him a shout on the heartbeat. I love it. I, that's beautiful. That means that love, that long-lasting relationships can happen, right? It's possible, but it's, it's about how you do dwell with one another. It's about how you treat M- Mother Randall and Deacon Randall. I think they're celebrating 156 years married. <laughs> Somewhere, I'm, I'm, I'm in the ballpark, right? I'm close, right, Mike? But that don't mean they had no fights. They learned how to fight. You got to learn how to fight and still be cool when you get done, right? You got to learn what to say, what not to say. Get the boundaries in place. I'm just, I'm just saying what I'm saying. Me and wife, my wife have fights. Y'all think we perfect? No, we're not. But guess what? We're at a place. Hey, Tim. Hey, Tim. Hold up. Don't tell them. We're in a place. We know how to defuse it before the fight start, don't we? We can sense it. We can sense, we can sense the pettiness rising up. And then she'll be quiet, I'll be quiet. So uh, is Kayla going to this birthday party? Because I never met the parents. <laughs> Distraction. <laughs> you <laughs> now, I'm, I'm gonna talk real quick about the children, then we're gonna get out for real. I'm serious. But, but your child needs some of the same things your spouse needs. And one thing that I think that we as parents, because we are just as affected by technology as they are, is that we need to put our phones down and give them undivided attention. I'm so glad y'all clapped. They need to know that they are important. Even if their ideas are far-fetched, they stutter while they talk. Pray for me. If you got a stutterer that love to talk, you talking about patience is a virtue? I'll be listening to one of my kids. I'll be like, store. No, no, it wasn't the store. (laughs) But your children need to know that they are seen, that they are heard, that they are understood, right? You can't bu- just buy them stuff. You can't just provide. That's not enough to be a good parent. All that stuff don't matter. What they want, guess what? You buy them all that stuff, and they want you to play with them with all the stuff you bought them. Am I lying, KB? JD be like, come on, let's play with this bike. I can't fit. He want me right there, right next to him, right, right next to the bike. This is my life for, for an hour and a half. This is me. This is me. Watch the, watch the curve. Watch the, watch the bump. Watch the bump. This is me. This is me. But that time with him lets him know daddy loves him. That's how you spell love for kids. T-I-M-E. That's how I said it correctly. That's how you spell love. T-I-M-E. I, last night, my wife was going in with my daughter for about a good hour and a half about her life. I loved it. And her mother was giving her wisdom left and right. You were, thank you, Holy Spirit, you were filling our chambers. Yep. Become a student of your child. Learn, because everyone is different. Amen. Understand their feelings. Understand how they respond understand their fears, understand their strengths, and ask the Holy Spirit for wisdom because you're going to make mistakes. But somewhere along the line, something's going to confirm in your spirit of how to handle that child. Thank you. Thank you. Empathize with them so that when they are out in the world and they're dealing with strangers, they're dealing with racism, They're dealing with wickedness. They come home. They have a place of security. They have a safe place. We can't can't just rely on the, the Xbox, the Nintendo Switch, Roblox. Amen. Talk, talk, laugh with him. Jaden don't make no sense, and we have great conversations. He don't be saying, 
nothing. Sonic. I'd be like, yeah, he fast. No. No, he's not. Yes, the real one, Lord. And I'd be just standing there like, yeah, man. All right. All right, daddy about to go. Take care of the house. No. Pour into him. This is the stuff that will make strong families. It's elementary, but it's major. Information, knowledge, right? Understanding, comprehension. Wisdom, application. Information is more important than operation. Ask God to give you insight to those that you dwell with. Even when you when you kind of got a hold on that, people that you're connected to. Because it's better to deal with them with understanding, not just with emotion. If, th- if this wasn't needed and all we needed was sex and money and 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 uh, 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 all that other stuff, then we then love the divorce rate would be so low because everybody giving that out. It ain't hard to come by for some. <laughs> But it's not. It is not what keeps a family. It is not what keeps a marriage. You have to use your brain as well as your heart. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. I try my best to seek God to talk about things that I always talked about on a Sunday morning. And I, and I believe that if you have taken heed to some of these teachings through our family series, I believe that you can see some change. You can see generational habits broken. You can see marriages affirmed, reconnected. You can see families growing strong. And please, I understand that your schedules are busy, but please take time and do the family mission statement. I say this as your pastor. Take time. Sit down. Seek God as a family with your children to develop and understand the standards that will guide your day-to-day life. Amen. It's on the website. The handout is available if you need the link. I know where it's at. Who else know where it's at? Anybody else in here know where it's at? And besides me, anybody else? Okay. Rick, Rick left. Rick, you know where the link is at? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. You know where the link is at for the family mission statement? Yes. Thank you. Raise your hand. Real high. You can see Rick. You can see me. So that if you need access to it, you can go download it and use it for your family. Amen. Let's all stand all over this place. There may be somebody here who doesn't know Christ as their personal Savior. Maybe you're in a backslidden condition and don't have a church home. We would love to accept you here. Or maybe you just need to reconnect with God. Maybe this message has pricked your heart to say, hey, I need to have patience with those that I say I love. I need to be intentional in our relationship. Holy Spirit, show me. Show me how to connect with my wife. Show me how to connect with my husband. Show me how to connect with my children. How do I get in their world so that our home is established? That, 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 that wisdom is building the house. That, that knowledge is filling our rooms. Huh? If there's one here, come. The altar is open. The altar is open. And God is just as concerned about your family as he is the next person. He's concerned about the relationships. He's concerned about the children. Why? Because he understands the importance and the purpose of family. If there's one here today, Jesus is waiting for you. Come, come, come now. Come now. Have your way, God. If there's one, if there's one. None come yet, there's room remain standing. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for every family that is represented here today. I thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy that has brought them this far. And I pray for your spirit to fill their chambers. I pray for your spirit to fill these jars of clay. Guide, divinely guide and direct them in every relationship with every spouse and every child. Lord, that the relationship will be stronger than the the, the material possessions, that the relationships will outlast the troubling times and the afflictions. Oh, Lord, that they learn how to deal with each other in a way with understanding, 
not just emotion, not just an emotional, spontaneous response, but with comprehension and understanding that they will allow wisdom to show them when and to show them how. That our families will be established, will be strong, will be built up, will be firm. And when that earthquake in life comes, the walls are still up. The roof is still on because the foundation is intact. Oh, Lord, we pray for your love to fill our hearts. That as you love the unlovable, we will do the same. God, that we would have the same grace with others that you have with us. Lord, that we would fight for reconciliation, not separation. That we will fight for unity, not discord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, and if the enemy is planning any attack against any address that I cover, Lord, I pray for you to raise up a standard that will cause the enemy to stumble and fall. Hide their houses under your wings, oh God. Raise them up where the enemy cannot reach them while they're vulnerable, oh God. And while they're in that protective custody, God, strengthen them. Affirm them. Mature us, God. That not only that we'll be good in the secular world, but we can be good in our private world. We can be successful in our private lives, God. For Lord, we don't want our careers lasting longer than our marriages. We don't want our cars lasting longer than our marriages. Hallelujah. We don't want our, our, our children growing up and being broken and our cars are still in mint condition. But God, show us how to make the right investment. Show us how to pour into those that matter. That we make it a big deal to invest in one another, to love on one another, to understand one another. Father, I thank you for this series. And may our church, our communities that we're connected to, and even our nation be better because we are bringing our families closer to what you desire. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. And my brothers and sisters say amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you so much. Before we get out of here, we want to. Oh, okay. Before we get out of here, we want to definitely sow a seed if you feel so led to be a blessing. Even those that are on the live feed, you can do so via Cash App. That's dollar sign MT Hebron, MT Hebron 216. Or you can click on the push pay link in the comments. Before we get out of here, we definitely want to, want to be a blessing. If you have your tithes and your offerings, please do so. to do here has everyone had a chance to give amen let's bow our heads in a word of prayer dear heavenly father we thank you for every seed that has been sown we pray father that you will multiply it and increase it that there will be meat in your storehouse and as you say lord that you will continue to give seed to the soul and so lord as we continue to sow may we continue to be blessed it's in the mighty name of jesus we pray and my brothers and sisters say amen Before we get out of here, we definitely want to make an announcement. We have a beautiful announcement to make. We have a, 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 a young soul, Mother Hawkins. Mother Hawkins, would you raise your hand? She celebrated her 100th birthday yesterday. That's, that's black history. That's what I'm talking about. 100 years. 100 years. Mother, we celebrate you. We love you. There's some cake and ice cream back there. So if you don't mind, just take a few moments and go back there and celebrate with her. Um, 
One, one fact I want to pull out, one memory I have that I love to share about Mother Hawkins, when we, we, we uh, gave away book bags in the community with supplies and things, we were praying for people, and uh, we were walking, some was walking this way, some was walking that way, and Mother Hawkins walked past the car, and they was trying to get her in the car. She said, no, I'm going to walk until I get tired. And she walked with us the whole day. The relatives had a car riding next to her the whole time. She was like, mother, so I, that's why I say young soul. Her, her outer body is getting older, but her spirit has just been renewed. You hear what I'm saying, KB? Her spirit, come on, somebody. Her spirit is renewed. So, mother, we love you. We thank you. Thank you for your press. Amen. All right, I need to get somebody to close us out for our service today. I need to get, oh, Deja, 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 why are you doing this? Come on, Deja, we already talked. Y'all pray for Deja, she is terrified. But God has not given us the spirit of fear, but spirit, love, and a sound. Come on up a little bit higher. Walk in your purpose. Ooh. Man, we shot some video footage for her uh, with her yesterday, and I tell you, she was I, I don't want to see the video. I don't want to see it. No. I'm like, Deja, you ain't got nothing to be afraid of. So she got an announcement, and she going to close us out in prayer. Give her a hand, y'all, as she overcome her fear today. And got a degree in marketing. Educated black woman. So our big announcement is that Mount Hebron now has its own Girl Scout troop. Um, <laughs> so our troop number is 71566. We will be kicking off in the coming weeks. But for now, what we need most, one, are girls. So we need girls from preschool all the way up until eighth grade. And you see, that's a lot of kids. That's a lot of ages, which means we'll need to split them up. So we'll also need some volunteers. I know that we are a church that has a heart for not only our community, but especially for children. So if you are willing to, one, volunteer your child um, or volunteer your own time, like Pastor said, love is spelled T-I-M-E, uh, please let me know after the church will take down your name, number, and email. And as we begin to develop our program, we will be sure to contact you. and clarity as to how we can apply this in our own individual lives. So we pray, pray traveling mercy as we leave in this place, but never from your presence in your, it's in your name we pray, amen. God bless you. Consider yourself just missing. Go back and celebrate with Mother Hawkins. <laughs>